Hello everyone. In this session, we will see pipes in Unix, which is an inter-process communication mechanism. An inter-process communication mechanism is a very generic term which describe how two processes may exchange information with each other. Pipe is an IPC mechanism that allow two or more processes to send information to each other. Let us see some of the pipe features. Again, it is a mechanism for IPC. It is a form of unidirectional communication. That is, a sender process sends information at right end of the pipe and receiver receives this information from its read end. It looks exactly same as reading from or writing to a file. Signals and pipes support IPC for local usage. If we want to have communication between processes which do not reside on the same machine or they reside on different physical machines, then we may have to use of sockets. Pipes allow two or more processes to send data to each other. Shells use pipe and here is an example as let's say at the Unix prompt we have typed the command who pipe wc hyphen l. Then what is the output here who is a utility or a command which generates one line of output per user that is the number of users who are logged in right now at this instance in the system. Then instead of printing the output on the screen, this output is pipeline onto the next command. What is our next command? wc hyphen l and what this utility does? It counts the number of lines. So instead of printing the names who are logged in into the system, it will print its number. There are two types of pipes, unnamed and named pipes. In this video, we will concentrate on unnamed pipes. So, how unnamed pipes are created? These are created by using pipe system call. In last video, we have seen what is a system call? It is an interface between a process and an operating system. After creating unnamed pipe, it returns two file descriptors, file descriptor 0 and file descriptor 1. File descriptor 0 is associated with read end of the pipe and file descriptor 1 is associated with right end of the pipe. Here is an example of how to create unnamed pipe. Integer fd of 2 and pipe of fd. And we have created our unnamed pipe. Since the name is as unnamed, we can't give any name to that unnamed pipe. That is why the name is unnamed. One process writes to the pipe and the other reads from the pipe which is created. Here we will have the diagrammatic view of unnamed pipe. Let's say that one pipe is created using the system call. So it has two ends, write end and read end which is defined by us. So which end is associated with the write end? FD of 1. And of course, FD of 0 is associated with read end of the pipe. We will see now one program using pipe system call in C language. Where parent process sends message to a child process. Before going to the program, let's have some terminology understood. So let's say that pipe is created. Now pipe has both ends open means both ends are available for writing 
as well as reading. Since it is unidirectional communication, one process should write and other process should read. So here parent process as we mentioned is a writer and child process is a reader. So which end of the pipe that parent should close and it should open. So right end should be open and read end should be closed. Again since child is a receiver which end of the pipe should be closed and which end should be opened by child process. So its right end should be closed and read end should be open. Now here is an algorithm for the program. First declare a buffer to store message received from the sender process. Then declare a named pipe. After that create a child process. Now parent process as a writer should close its read end as a good programming practice and then write message into the pipe at its right end. After writing the message parent process will close its right end. Then child process since as a reader should close its right end as a good programming practice and then it will read message which is sent by the sender in our case now it is parent at the read end. After that child process closes its read end. Now we will see the program. As usual we have to declare the header files then the message that we are going to send is grab the opportunity you can give any message that you want then declare main function and the buffer in which reader process will read the message then create the unnamed pipe here we use pipe system called to create an unnamed pipe. Then child process is created by using fork system call. Here in the single if statement we have created child process and then immediately parent process is scheduled because fork not equal to zero means create a child process and since its PID is greater than zero means immediately parent process is scheduled. So since it's a parent process for good programming practice we will close its read in. Then by using the write system call we are writing message into the pipe. At which end we write the message at its FD of 1 and third parameter is as usual that is the length of the message. So here normal write system call we are making use of to write the contents into the pipe as pipe is similar to the file it is considered as a file. Now parents duty is over parent has written the contents into the pipe and after this it should close its writing. Now we will write the code of the child process since child is a reader we will close its writing then we are going to read the contents from the pipe from read end so what is that read end it is fd of 0 and where we are reading the contents we are reading the contents in the buffer which we have declared earlier and how many bytes now we do not know here how many bytes so for safer side I have mentioned here 1024 bytes. You can mention the number as 100 or the number that you can any any number that you can use. Then after that generally we should close it. Which end we should close? We should close FD of 0. Then we are printing the message from the writer to the reader. Printf got this form from writer and then percentage s and we have mentioned here buffer 
so guess now what is the output the output is got this from the writer grab the opportunity who will print this message of course this message is printed by the child process now here are some questions for you what is the purpose of pipe as we mentioned pipe is used as an inter process communication mechanism how to declare a named pipe it is declared by using pipe system call pipe is used for unidirectional communication the answer is true that is a sender process sends information whereas reader process reads information is it possible to communicate between two remote processes using a named pipe no for that we must have to make use of the other system calls for example socket then can we use unnamed pipe for process communication after program execution ends again the answer is no because what is the lifetime of an unnamed pipe it is only during the execution of the program when parent and child processes finish execution after that that unnamed pipe no longer exists now let's have some assignment that of course you have to do on your own make use of l6 system call in the given unnamed pipe program and observe the output and write the conclusion thank you